kid family welcome back to the channel today we're gonna have a sit down and talk about a turbo scion tc that i recently drove a few weeks ago great little car but at that time when we test drove it we didn't know anything about the turbo kit what mods it has and the owner didn't know too much about it because he wasn't the original owner of the vehicle so we did a lot of in-depth diving research and we know all the specs about the vehicle as far as the turbo kit and every little mod that you need to go with it so if you guys are interested in this information see what kind of mods it has see what kind of power it makes stay tuned for the rest of the video ah. All right, so the main reason I really got attracted to this vehicle is because of its yellow color. I love yellow colors, and this car actually has a nice, deep, vivid yellow tone to it. This is a 2012, and TC and Scion released a RS7 series, which was called the High Voltage Yellow, and only 2,200 units were produced. So that's pretty interesting, the fact that it's a limited number. And, you know, the fact that Scion is no longer in production can be a good thing and a bad thing. Good thing is, it's going to be a unique car down the road. Bad thing is, Scion wasn't that popular. TCs were very um, high schoolish and early college years. People drove those. So, I don't know. I don't know if it's a good reputation to have a Scion. Um, I don't think so because it's a front-wheel drive vehicle. And it was, it was populated towards the young brand. All right, guys, let's jump right into it. As you can see, this turbo kit is from P Tuning, which is no longer in production, but it fits the 2012, 2011 to 2013 manual trans. And the turbo kit comes with the ECU and the injectors. Okay, this turbo kit is called the Spec SS Turbo Kit, and it ran for about $4,700. Now, if you click on this link, it will tell you that it's been removed again because it's no longer in production. This is a pretty steep price to pay for a turbo kit, but it is a solid turbo kit. All the, everything pretty much is included what you need. So let's dive right into it. We were able to find installation guide for this turbo kit, which was for manual transmissions only. And we're just going to run through this installation guide. I'll explain everything that's included, the turbo size, turbo specs. And at the same time, while we go through this, you guys are going to be able to see what's involved in turboing a non-turbo car it's a lot of work a lot of stuff needs to be done to make it work properly but let's get through it first of all we're gonna skip through it as you can see this is nice uh, it tells you that uh, it's gonna be tuned on premium gasoline 93 or higher it tells you where to gap your factory spark plugs in order for everything to work perfectly the full kit is preloaded with a base map but it, they recommend a full official dyno tune after everything was installed which this guy actually did get a dyno tune professionally done and I'll explain that in a little bit but man I'm glad I found this little uh, installation guide because every single part is included so let's go ahead and check it out you got a 44 uh, 40 millimeter wastegate two and a half inch downpipe. The most important thing that you guys are looking at is what kind of turbo is this turbo kit running? It is a Garrett T3 T04E 57 trim, so stage three, whatever that means. And we got a 82 AR housing. Now I'm not too familiar with specs. I know there's intake housing, exhaust housing, but this is what we are looking for. 57 trim, it's decently sized. I mean, I. I'm sure they did a great job designing this for this vehicle so it's get so it gets good quality uh, spool time and not too much lag. And again, here we finally see what kind of wastegate we are running. Turbo Smart wastegate 40 millimeters again, 7 psi. So we're run the car is supposed to run with 7 pounds of boost. Again, all these cars that I've touched drove that are turbocharged they always spike I don't know what the reason for all these spikes are but they are spiking and even this car even though it says seven pounds when we drove it we were hitting close to probably 10 11 pounds of boost so it has to do again with your wastegate design how big your wastegate is and where the wastegate is positioned in the turbo manifold because the faster you can diverge those exhaust gases 
from going to the turbo, the more you can keep your boost pressure consistent if you're just running on a spring wastegate. For those people that don't know, if you get a boost controller, I'll show you guys this in a little bit, but a wastegate has um, a few nipples in there that you can control vacuum ports to. Boost controller is actually going to create boost on top of the spring. So once you hit that seven pounds of boost, more vacuum or more pressure is going to go on top of the spring to keep it at that seven pounds of boost so you won't be over boosting. I know it might sound a little bit confusing, but it's, it's not too bad. It's all in the tuning with boost controllers. Then every single thing that's on here is included, you know, uh, O2 extenders, all these fittings and nipples and a lot of stuff, but this is not that important. You got your, uh, rate, uh, you got your intercooler here, your fittings, 10 a.m. fittings for the drains and the feeds for the turbo. The turbo is a oil cooled turbo. It's not a water cooled and oil cooled. You up Usually when you have a turbo car factory, it's oil cooled, water cooled. And then even if you go stage three on that type of vehicle that came turbo factory, you're gonna have the turbo that's oil cooled, water cooled. Now that's great because for the longevity of the vehicle, it's gonna keep things cooler, running more efficient, and it's just better down the road. It is a lot more uh, hoses and feeds and drains, but for the longevity of the vehicle, it is definitely worth it. And going down here towards the bottom, you can see what tuning software we are using. That was a big concern for me because I didn't know what kind of tuning software the car is running on. The old Civic that we went to test drive, the guy wasn't even running a tune. So if you're not running a tune and you turbocharge the vehicle, might as well just shoot the dang engine with a shotgun because it's going to blow eventually. And I don't know why people do that. But AEM fuel ignition controller, AEM. <clears throat> guys that's a huge company they make great great products so it's nice to see that they use the quality name brand tuning software you can see that the tune is preloaded the base map is there and then you got a plug and play harness now we'll talk about this boom slang plug and play harness in a little bit because this thing blew my mind how expensive it was and again, now this answered my questions. Originally, I didn't know how big the injectors were for the turbo kit. And it turns out they are 550 cc's plug and play injectors. Now, when a kit comes with everything plug and play, that is an amazing job. It makes things so much easier. So, so far we know we got a 57 trim Garrett turbo, which is Garrett, man. If you don't know Garrett, it is amazing. I'm not sure if this one is a ball bearing or journal bearing, but I'm gonna go with journal bearing just because of how old the kit is ball bearing all, always is better because it's just a much easier turbo to spin and create boost pressure faster i'll just run through the pictures real quick turbo manifold this is the down pipe that's perfectly fitted to fit in this engine bay so you don't have to remove the air conditioner or any other units this is the screamer pipe right here uh, the one on the bottom, this just, the wastegate dumps, it's a dump valve. So when the wastegate diverts all that exhaust gases from the turbo, some people have that wastegate uh, tube recirculate back into the exhaust. It just lowers the noise down of the vehicle, but some people like it like this. And plus, it's a lot easier to install. call it a screamer pipe because once that turbo spools and you're letting all these gases out man it sounds great but it is very loud here is your turbo charger this is your wastegate again turbo smart products garrett products this is all high quality stainless steel turbo manifolds everything looks good nice couplers what else we got we got a slim fan design uh, radiator fan oil feed line uh, fittings and uh, oil restrictor for the turbocharger, intercooler, some accessory piping. So the battery actually for this vehicle is removed and they use a new battery tray and a very slim Odyssey battery to make everything fit properly. You got uh, your intercooler piping here. Everything's very nice. Dry, dry filter right here. The beauty of a dry filter is it's going to keep your air fuel ratios proper. A lot of people use a, a oil 
filter. And from my research and from some things that I've read online, the oil is actually going to cause your air fuel mixtures to go a little bit out of whack. So a lot of people use oil catch cans for their vehicle. Why? Because they don't want the oil going back into their intake track to get reburned because that lowers your combustion efficiency and decreases power. So I don't know why people would want to use a oil, uh, wet oil air filter system. It's just not the best thing. And I'm not sure if this guy had a new oil pan with a tap already included or they just drilled the factory oil pan for the turbo to drain, but no big deal. And then, you know, this whole thing just goes along and tells you how everything was installed, which was great because at first when I saw this car, you know, I don't know how this job was done. I know it was done by a company, so that's good. If someone was doing this by themselves, do it yourself. I'd be really uh, hesitant on buying the vehicle, but knowing every step that was done and how everything is installed is great because if i buy the car and i have any future problems i can always look back at all the steps that were involved in installing the turbocharger and go there as far as diagnosing any problems the great thing about this great write-up great descriptions a lot of pictures here on the front of the engine is where you can see they are going to tap into to get the oil pressure for the turbocharger which is great on hondas it was always usually in the back and you had to t-tap which was a pain in the butt but right here this t-tap very nice and easy to do we're gonna keep going we're removing all the air boxes everything is getting removed bath sensor is removed now we're dealing with the front of the car we're gonna be installing the radiator soon make sure it fits so on this particular car there was some cutting involved to make everything fit. The factory ones were too big, so they included that slim design fan, which I didn't notice any overheating issues of the vehicle when I test drove it. The great thing is, man, everything is included in a kit like this. All right, turbo kit. This is what we wanna see, as you can see. You want the top of the turbo to be your inlet for the oil and you want the drain to be directly on the bottom. As you can see here, they're using this uh, hose from the tap. Let's take a look right here. Notice there's no kinks in the drain line here. Everything is assembled properly, man. It's just a very good kit, man. And P-Tuning is still creating turbos for FRSs, BRZs, and they do an amazing job Yes, you got to pay a pretty penny, but you're really buying quality things. All these uh, exhaust pipes are V-band clamps. If you guys don't know, V-bands are amazing. They're easy to take on and off. So right here, man, as you guys can see, there is the, this is, let me see, this is the wastegate right here. So you got one nipple right here that's going to control the wastegate spring, but there's another one where it says right here leave open you can connect another nipple here another port and with a boost controller it's going to create pressure right on the top so that diaphragm that piston inside is leveled and you get your seven pounds of boost no over boosting issue or at least limited over boosting so it's it's great how everything is explained everything is shown very very detailed i love it if only every write-up was uh, this this clear. So here we got the T-tap. So obviously we still need to get our oil pressure, oil or oil feed for the turbo. We also have a the factory oil pressure sensor in there. And I believe this guy with this Scion also has a oil pressure gauge. So he tapped uh, one more thing into this system. Those AEM gauges that he has are very nice guys. We'll talk about those in a little bit. Again, V-band clamps for the intercooler piping. Beautiful turbo manifold. If you have a boost uh, gauge, it tells you where to tap into the vacuum lines for the boost gauge. What gives you the most accurate reading. I love it, man. And then uh, install, installing fuel components. So it pretty much tells you, again, how to install the fuel, uh, fuel injectors into the system here. All right, this is what I wanted to see. Remember earlier I told you about that jumper harness that was very expensive. This is all the wiring pretty much that you see. You got your stocky, so you 
and then you got this jumper harness. I don't know if back in the day, because right now we have flash tunes. You connect a little tuner into your OBD2 port and everything is flashed. You tune the flash on, then you disconnect that OBD tuner and you're good. Here, it looked like a different system back in the day. They have this jumper harnessed in order to tap into the software and then you connect the AEM uh, management unit into the jumper harness. Very confusing. And that's just about it, guys. It tells you again, 93 octane. It tells you some basic things, what you want to do, new motor oil. I was curious because it didn't specify anything about weight of the oil, whether you should use a higher weight oil or a lower weight oil. Well, you're not going to use a lower weight oil, but you might want to go from, let's say, if this is a 020, you might want to go to a 520 or a 530 because there's a lot more pressure. There's a lot more um friction in a way and you don't know if that 20 weight oil is thick enough to protect that motor during high boost situations so let's go ahead and check out the aem fic unit this is another installation guide i found from this right now this aem unit is running for about 400 dollars again this is included with the turbo kit for 4700 dollars and uh yeah, it's a nice little system, a very first generation system, will control your fuel ignition timing and all that stuff, so very nice. This is another write-up for the AE, uh, AEM FIC unit, everything you need to know is right here, how to connect it. So that's the beauty of having these write-ups, you, you can actually go through everything, it tells you step by step what you want to do, and it even tells you if you want to tune it yourself, you definitely can. Again, remember that base map is already installed on the vehicle, so you can start and drive the car for some time. I wouldn't really boost the car right away. I mean, I would try to get a professionally tuned. So this particular vehicle, it was tuned. tuning it made a lot of power it made close to 335 wheel horsepower and around 300 pound feet of torque so let's keep going we got the AEM FIC very good the next thing we already know it has 550 cc fuel injectors so there's different kits 440 550 750 depending on how much power you make or want to make but the beauty of it again plug and play always the best this is the jumper harness that uh, you need to get that AEM FIC connected to the factory ECU man when I saw this price $600 for this for this wiring harness ridiculous now I'm not sure it, here it says that full kit with ECU injectors is included in the turbo kit but I'm not exactly sure if this whole wiring harness is included because if it's not that's a huge price to pay and that's where i love the flash tunes like i mentioned earlier in today's vehicles just so fast and efficient it's great to hold all that power down the car does come with a six puck clutch i'm not sure again this is all p tuning's website this is where i'm sure the guy got all his stuff from act company there's a six puck race disc and a six puck sprung disc both hold about 400 pounds i'm not sure which one he has but again you can see how much they cost between 300 to 400 dollars the clutch felt pretty heavy but it was very easy to drive um did install the car at all so you know and it grabs and that's what you want you want the clutch to grab and hold down that power otherwise what's the point of increasing power if your car can't hold it and put it down to the ground <laughs> What sucks is again there's no limited slip differential in this vehicle so you can't really hold that power down anything from first to second gear when you're just like launching it is going to be pointless that's where this car like i said before it's not a race car it's just a fun car it would be a fun car around town just to get all that boost uh, noises and turbo spooling and blow off valve noises that would be fun but if you're trying to get numbers and beat times it's not worth it unless you upgrade the to a limited slip differential and then you might be a little better off 
So the car comes with a Gretti Sports Racing Sport exhaust, which is really expensive compared to the other exhausts on P-Tuning. Nice single exit. It is a little angled into the bumper, which I used to love. But as you can see right here on the website, this is perfectly sitting with the bumper. The, the exhaust on this vehicle we went to check out is not even sitting perfect. So I'm not sure if they adjusted the piping because of the turbo kit or something, but it definitely needs work and needs readjustment. Does this, this probably doesn't have a catalytic converter, right? And then if you guys know, this vehicle that we have has an upgraded fuel pump. The turbo kit itself can run on a factory fuel pump, but I guess this owner had some fuel issues, fuel delivery issues. And you know, you want to keep that fuel pressure good. You want to have enough fuel because if you run lean, meaning there's not enough fuel going into the engine, you blow that motor. So this guy has a upgraded 255 inline fuel pump. Inline means that it's not in the gas tank, it's under the vehicle. This car that we went to see, the fuel pump was so loud, guys. I couldn't believe how loud it could be. I actually emailed P-Tuning later on and I asked them whether, and I, I sent them a clip of the, the, of the car and how it sounds and they said that is not normal. It is too loud and it sounds usually, usually when it sounds so loud, it's a sign that the fuel pump is gonna be going bad. During the test drive, I noticed the air fuel ratios were good still, so maybe it's not dead, but it's going bad. So that will definitely need to get replaced. And again, a perfect installation process it tells you how to install the in inline fuel pump, very small fuel pump, very efficient. A lot of people run it. A lot of people have noise issues though, because again, it's under the vehicle. It's not in the fuel tank, so it is gonna be louder. I've watched different videos online with this fuel pump and it's definitely not as loud as the one I went to test drive. So this will need to get replaced, be replaced. It's about a 150 to $200 pump. Not too bad. The fuel system has been upgraded to a return style fuel system. Most of the fuel systems, factory cars, they are returnless, which isn't the best. This is not a direct injection car. Direct injection cars work a little bit different than port injection. But in port injection, to increase your fuel pressure, you will need a fuel pressure regulator such as this. And as you can see, there's a, there's a feed then it goes to your injectors and your fuel rail and whatever is excessive to the amount of fuel pressure you, you need. And you can see by the, the gauge here, you, you'll notice how much uh, fuel pressure you need. The rest of it is drained back through another hose going all the way back to the tank. So this way you can get more fuel going to the engine and draining efficiently. You'll be able to maintain your fuel pressure much better. And there's a nipple right here on the top of this fuel pressure regulator. And that is a vacuum hose adapter here. You're gonna to have to put that in. And the fuel pressure changes with your load on the engine with the vacuum pressure on the intake manifold. So you won't starve the engine of any power. So that's interesting. That was all new to me. I've never seen a car with a return system like this. I guess the owner was having um, problems after the original tune. He was making more power. So that's when he upgraded the clutch and that's when he did the return system and the fuel pressure fuel pump. Finally, he is running the Aztec Springs. They were the green ones I noticed when I was looking under the car. It's about a one and a half inch drop in the front, 1.8 in the rear. He is running factory shocks, which is gonna kill the shocks for sure because that's a pretty aggressive drop for a factory shock. So that eventually will have to get replaced or upgrade the, the shocks to Coney's. Well, there you guys have it. These are just some of the things that I've noticed about the vehicle, the research I have done. Very important to do a lot of research when you're buying a modified car such as this. Hopefully you guys have learned something from this video, what is necessary to boost a non-boosted factory car. Let me know what do you guys think about the vehicle. Let me know if you guys have any experiences with a Scion with an aftermarket turbo kit. It's a good kit. I would definitely be interested in the vehicle. Uh, you know, the, the car also had an accident and I'm not too fond of the whole accident and how it was repaired. Some of the panels don't fit perfectly. But again, 
you're not buying the car for 100% um, perfection. You know, I'm buying it for the turbo kit and the enjoyment of driving it as a daily driver or something like that. But we'll see, man. I'm constantly talking with the owner here and there, seeing if we can work on the price. He's not budging. I'm not budging. So we'll see what happens. But summer is ending right around the corner. So he still has the car for sale. Maybe he'll let it go. Maybe not. But anyway, we're going to keep looking at cars, keep seeing what's out there. And if the right car falls into my hands, then so be it. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe this video. Hopefully, you guys learned something from here. And hopefully, guys, I'm going to keep making banging ass videos for you guys so you can learn and grow with me. And we'll keep growing this channel. So thank you, and we'll see you on the next video. Peace. I ain't here for the money. I ain't here for the fame. Though it might be nice to own a jet plane. I'ma do it all for you. Come along and see it's true. But the world is pretty cold. You might need a sweater, too. I'ma put a ride on you. Get from California. Trying to make it in life. It's school that never taught you. Dreams.